Bruce Broussard. Hello, guys. Yes, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, folks. I hope everything's well for you. As you know, we're right in the midst of politics, and it's really, really getting heavy at this point in time. And as I indicated to you before, don't stress out. Take care. Take it easy. A lot of things are going to be thrown at you at this point in time, but but spend the time reading the material, especially the voters' pamphlet. You've just gotten a copy of the voters' pamphlet, so I would suggest that that's a nonpartisan kind of a piece that you spend some time and and look at the look at the basically both the candidates, what's been said about the candidates. Normally, they talk about themselves, and also the ballot measures that are out there. So I would suggest that would be your guidelines, you know, for whatever, both from president on down. Okay. So with that, uh, now what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to we're going to kind of maybe just shift a bit and from the standpoint of what's talking about what's going on in the community and this, that, and the other. So our first segment will be basically talking with an organization that's sort of like doing some things, and I thought that was a good, I think it's a good effort by them, and so we're going to talk to, to these groups, that, that particular group. And the second half hour, we're going to get into politics. You know, Herman, uh, uh, gonna be talking, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, whether, whether it be the presidential race or whatever, or maybe Lotto or ballot measure 82, 83, or whatever. So that's what we're going to do. So second half hour. So stick around, and I'm sure you'll probably learn some more as we normally do. Okay, with that. Why don't I just get right into our program here? We have a group of uh, uh, young ladies, if you will. Uh, they're representing a sorority, uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. I'm kind of sort of familiar with that because I remember going to Texas Southern University. I sort of like pledged initially for Kappa, but then I did Omega. <laughs> I did, I did Omega. I mean, I went through the whole line. I, mean, oh, I was pretty well right. sought after during that particular time. But, it, but anyway, uh, but the bottom line is that. Um, it's just part of some of the things that you do when you go to school, when you go to college, if you will. And then from that point on, the, the organization still lives. And they're both men and women. And in this particular case, we've got uh, a women's group, if you will. And, uh, and a lot of times what they do, they get involved in all sorts of activities in terms of contributions and giving back to community and, and social and the like and whatever. So it's a real good thing. So if you're ever interested in possibly going to school, you may want to Maybe want to take notes, if you will, and see how how they react, if you will, to their particular group. I.e., in this case, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and their local group is Zeta Sigma Omega Chapter. Right. Am I right there? Yes. Okay, yes. fine. And uh, they've got a they've got a, a, an event coming up. But what we're going to do? We're going to take the, the opportunity one to to define what is this group. How did it start? How did it get involved in it? You know, maybe get some some little bits or whatever. And the way we're going to do that, and we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about uh, the, the upcoming events. It's a fundraising event. It's, a, it's well. I'm not going to get get into it. <laughs> um, this is their program, and so I, I'm just here as a facilitator, as you know. Okay. So, so what we're going to start off with is that we're going to we're going to introduce the president, and that's Brenda Patterson, right? Brianna Peterson. Bri Brianna. Yes. Brianna. Brianna Peterson. Mm -hmm. She's the president of the organization, and what we're going to do, we're going to give her the opportunity to. Not only that, introduce herself and introduce the guests that we have here with her, and then we're just going to get into the program, okay? Okay, All right. great. Brianna, talk so to So I am Brianna Peterson. I'm the chapter president of Zeta Sigma Omega, okay. and I've been acting as president for about the past three years, mm -hmm. and I joined the organization back in 2005, so I was able to matriculate onto the graduate chapter. From Portland? From University of Oregon. From University of mm -hmm. Oregon, but and you live in I'm Portland. I'm from Portland. From yes. Portland. Yes. Okay, so, so you're Patterson. Peterson. Peterson. Boy, mm -hmm. I tell you, I get that. Yeah. I've got this Patterson on my mind yes. for some strange. But Peterson, right? Peterson. So you got local folks that you know. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Good. All right. Yes. Good. Well, welcome, welcome aboard. Good. So I'll introduce good. the rest of our members, and I'll let them um, share a little bit about themselves. This is Kelly Johnson, Joy Fowler, and Lakeisha Gunter. Okay. I am a member of the Portland chapter of Zeta Sigma Omega. I've been a member of the chapter now more than eight years. However, I became a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, mm -hmm. oh, more than 15 years ago. Wow. And that was at a, another campus. Um, the beautiful thing about Alpha Kappa Alpha and its contribution here to this community of Portland mm -hmm. is that we bring a very diverse group of women mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. uh, to service this community. Mm -hmm. And my sorority sister will tell you more. What school did you go to? What, what school did you attend? I went to U of O Law School, U of o. Okay. undergraduate at Humboldt State in California. Oh, so you're a lawyer, you're an attorney? I am. Oh, you really? Yes. Uh, what, what, what are you practicing? What area? You know, I'm a prosecutor by trade. I oh, was a you look, prosecutor, you look prosecutor here. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I want to make sure I don't get <laughs> so, so, 
So you work with the county or just a private practice? I was a state prosecutor for 13 years. Now I'm a prosecutor for the Oregon State Bar. I regulate lawyers. Regulate lawyers? Yes. Oh, regulate. but we'll talk about that more. Yes. We'll have another show on you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. And my name is Joy Fowler, and I too am a member of Zeta Sigma Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I became a member 24 years ago wow. in New York City um, at one of the local campuses there. Hmm. And so I've been in Portland for 22 years and hmm. a member of the chapter for about 19. Wow. What did you go to school? Uh, Baruch College. Baruch it's College. a Baruch. It's Baruch. a city college of New York. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. And what are you doing now? Uh, now I work for Umqua Bank. I am the manager of the location on First and Columbia. Oh, another person we have to do another show on. <laughs> <laughs> People looking for finance, right? Be fine. Okay. Hi, my name is Lakeisha Gunter, and um, I've been in the Portland area for about four years and been a member of the chapter since then. I pledged at University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida in 1992, so I've been a member of our organization for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, my background is engineering. I work at Intel Corporation as a validation engineering manager. Wow, boy, what a great How about you? Did, did we get you back? No, um, I work in compensation at Nike out in Beaverton. Oh, wow. Well, well, it's a very right. diverse Fantastic. group. <laughs> yes. what, what are some of the things? Let's talk about AKA you know, in terms of when, when you pledge and this, that, that. Just go through, one, one of you, just go through basically. Okay, you go to school, right? You're freshman. Right? When, when, when do they approach you? you know, on the first day, second day? Well, well I don't think yeah. it actually anyone approaches you. You actually do a little research on your own okay. as someone who is interested in possibly joining the organization. Mm -hmm. And you do your research, whether it's through library research or seeing what they do on campus, and then you make your decision and you attempt to become a member. Mm, so that you contact them. As an interest. As an interest, so to speak. That's not the way it worked at Texas Southern. Boy, they were on you. <laughs> <laughs> they were on your first day almost. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, the, the interesting thing about the organization, to stay relevant, mm -hmm. we, we grow and we expand mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. So our organization is the first African American women's sorority ever established mm -hmm. in 1908. Really? So after a hundred years, wow. you know, we have evolved and diversified. So our the way we accept members now is a bit different than mm -hmm. it was then. I got to make a note though that uh, yeah, when I thought about AK, because with all due respect, I, I just happened to have been going with someone in AK mm -hmm. with green and white, right? Pink, pink and green. green. Pink, 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 pink and white? Pink and green. Pink and green. Pink and green. Yeah. Yeah. Is it green? Okay, but pink and green. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. do, I, do I see any pink and green today? Always. You might oh, see yeah. a hint of oh, okay. green. Okay, I want to make sure. I want to make sure. It's in our heart. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. So now here we are in Portland, okay? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you were doing here in the Portland area? Anybody? Yeah, so our chapter was founded in 1955 in the Portland area and throughout the years. So this is actually our 25th annual Emerald Awards event that we'll share a little bit more with you. So that's one of our main scholarship raising events that we have throughout the year. So we're really trying to um, push uh, support for that event. And it's a great event because we actually honor black men in the community and we're the only organization that that does that mm -hmm. in the portland area so it was really important to us and also to have you as an honoree okay. <laughs> <I'm honored. laughs> yes yeah, so that's one of our our main focal events okay. and i'll let my other sorority sisters share some of okay. our other activities we also have a program called emerging young leaders typically what happens is the larger organization has different initiatives and as a local chapter we then implement those initiatives mm -hmm. so one of those is our emerging young leaders program it was at Ockley Green School where we worked with sixth through eighth grade girls mm -hmm. and we just helped them with etiquette leadership development empowerment and different things and this mm -hmm. year we are moving to Beaumont Middle School to mm -hmm. do the same thing oh, wow interesting mm -hmm. keep going in addition to working with young women, our sorority has specific interest in uplifting the African American community. So all of our programs from health education to education to spiritual and um, religious um, commitment, we have programs that address what's necessary in the Portland community. And one of the great things about this event, the Emerald Awards, is in recognizing those successful African-American men. And success is defined very broadly in terms of their contributions to the community. And, and like the, the importance of making sure that we recognize those people, our chapter in this community over the years have 
put on several events mm. to make sure that we're meeting the needs of what's necessary in the mm. community. Well, this, is, this is really exciting, trust me. Absolutely. As I've been getting to you before, I think it's very important that we, we project that and we educate mm. the public out mm. there in terms of some of the things that you're doing. Because often, especially these young male today, especially mm -hmm. today, they're, you know, we're constantly talking about the leadership and role models and right. things of that nature. And you all are really doing a great service. And that's one of the reasons why here at uh, Cable Access, we want to make sure we get this information out. And as the viewers know that we know we're on YouTube also too, and you can email this show to anybody and everybody. So that's a very mm -hmm. important piece, if you will. So let's get now in terms of the, some of the recipients. In fact, let's talk about the, from a historical standpoint, what were some of the recipients that you've had? In the, uh, we've had Dr. Ernie Hartzog. Mm -hmm. We've had Josiah Nunn. We've had Roy Jay previously. Dr. Edward Ward. Dr. Edward Ward um, James Taylor. Alan Fowler. Sam, Sam Fowler. Sam Fowler. Sam Fowler yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we've also honored um, James Taylor. I mentioned James. We've uh, Brian Grant of the Portland Trailblazers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kenny Anderson, I believe, also of the Trailblazers mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. You know, I guess in all due respect, I, I would like to have seen more of these photos. I wish we had some photos. Maybe next time around, you, yeah. if they yeah, can, absolutely. we can get there. We'll maybe we get some photos. Sure, absolutely. We want, the, we want these folks to be known and that to be to be seen out in the community. Maybe you guys can give them some symbol or something that they yeah. can be recognized, <laughs> right. <as> representing your <laughs> something organization. <pink. laughs> there you go. Something pink. Yes, I like that. I like uh, that. That's a good. That's a good deal. So now you got you got an event this year, right? Right. Okay, and this event's going to be held when and where, and let's go through that. Yeah, so our event this year will be held on November 10th, and it's going to be at um, OHSU Atrium. Mm -hmm. And um, we have an array of different areas that we honor our honorees in, from health to education mm -hmm. to youth services. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll share the yeah. actual details for the event. So the address is 33 03 Southwest Bond Avenue, Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. and the event will start at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, so that's on a Saturday. So it, yeah, it's on a available. Saturday. Okay. okay. So okay. it's kind of a different format than we've had in the past in what, few wait, years what because we've had a Sunday brunch mm -hmm. and okay. um, people would usually come mm -hmm. after church or the other mm -hmm. activities that mm -hmm. they may have. But we're having a, a dinner, more of a nighttime evening event, mm -hmm. cocktail mm -hmm. style. So. Um, we're excited about Absolutely. the change and mm. to see, mm. you know, the participation and mm. all the hard work that's gone. What into about it. availability? Can the public come? If they oh want? yes, we love the public. Well, how, to come. How, do, how does the public get to you guys? Um, well, we'll leave our information, okay. and um, we also have an Eventbrite set up, and that's a website where you can purchase tickets. And um, there's about 30 members in our chapter that are selling tickets in the okay. community too. What kind of cost are we looking at? It's forty-five dollars okay. and. Each? Per person. Per, okay. per person. And really, it's really fundraising. It's yeah, really more, yes, more yes. Than it's Strictly more. fundraising, and that includes dinner, and there will be live entertainment there as well. So. Mm -hmm. And it's nonprofit, right? Right. So right. they can write it off their taxes. Yeah, We're absolutely right. looking to partner point. with corporations, oh, really? organizations yes. okay. um, for sponsorship opportunities. Okay. Um, so if there's any companies that are out there that are interested in supporting mm -hmm. this event, to your right. point, we're honoring men in the community who are making a significant impact right. um, in right. their respective career fields, but also in terms of them giving back to the community and yes. impacting the next generation. So it's a wonderful opportunity to partner with us in this endeavor to highlight the men in the community and the impact they're having, yes. and also to provide some amazing scholarships funds for those African-American students and students in the area mm -hmm. who are looking to increase their quality of life, increase their educational outlook. Right. And, so and how long have you been doing this? This is the 25th annual event. This is the 25th mm -hmm. annual event. Yes. Have you seen some of the students coming back, you know, for scholarships and whatever? And yes, and some of them. in the workforce and whatever. And absolutely. Any, actually any became members of our, our right. organization. That's so sort of part of the criteria. <laughs> well, no, no. 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 Come on now. What about the guys? They have to do alpha. Do they have to do alpha? No, they have to play no, the alpha, huh? No. You, you can just go anywhere. You know, right? No, we, we just we go to school. Exactly, go <laughs> to school. Well. And our our contribution is that that faith and that belief that they are going to be the success that they've already been mm -hmm. um, in this local yeah. community. Okay. And no matter where they go, mm -hmm. um, when they take our scholarship with them, that is our faith that they're going to carry forth no matter what community they serve in and no matter what capacity, right. that they don't have to be Greek to do that. Is that right? right. Yeah. We love sure. everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you trust you, you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what, what about, what's the size of the scholarship? How much? What kind of? 
Does it vary each, each time? It so does vary. It? We've awarded scholarships anywhere from $500 to $1,000. Mm -hmm. We'd like to increase those scholarships. Mm -hmm. right, right. So as Lakeisha was saying, yes. we are definitely looking mm -hmm. to partnership with local businesses in the community because the young people that we identify through mm -hmm. our process are stellar young people who are right. going to be the leaders in whatever they decide to do. Yeah, so exactly. companies in our community that are looking to contribute to that growth, this is the place to do it. Wow, wow. So so, so if, if a corporation mm -hmm. wants to contribute or whatever, they can create whatever amount, right? To That's right, exactly. Yes. We'll maybe, take it all. And maybe you might uh, supply a photo of the recipients and they, they can maybe display in their foyer absolutely. or whatever. You, you would do this? Would yes, absolutely. Whatever okay. they need it. Okay, mm -hmm. good. I think it's a good idea. I really, mm -hmm. I think it's a real good and idea. And also, the sponsorship also gives them the opportunity to advertise their business in, yes. in our right. uh, souvenir booklet. And that also shows their commitment to oh. the organization and commitment to empowering youth and right. enabling them to be successful in the future. So now, so your book, book, okay, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm that piece. So I take it, you, one can take ads out? And yes, get, absolutely, okay. yes. And how do they access that, that part of the? Well, they can, um, and we'll leave our contact information, but I'm the person that's working with our, um, our um, chair. Um, okay. Sore so Pat okay. um, and Sore Melanie. And so what we're doing is for any organization that wants to be a part of that souvenir book, they can email the ads to us. Um, there's varying prices, okay. and we'll make sure that they actually their ad makes it into the book. And okay. so it's a beautiful souvenir booklet that highlights a lot of businesses in the community. It also mm -hmm. highlights our honorees. Oh, great. Yes, okay. and Good. it gives a little bit of background in terms oh, of what you they're You can see them. You can see them. You know, yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, and absolutely. they'll be at the event. The visuals, yeah. the visuals, right? yeah. I'm always yeah. into visuals. You know, you know visuals. And I'm the really sponsorship, into visuals. depending on the dollar amount, also gives the company a table oh, at the event. That's a great. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Oh, that's a good deal. Now, let's talk about this. I mean, rather than giving them, let's give them the information now. Okay. Corporation can contact you. Now, Dave, do we have that uh, that website on? And I'm sure on that website, uh, you've got a phone number in there. Is that we do. Yes. Contact you, right? the Pink IV? Yes. Right, the Pink, Pink IV. Ivy Foundation. Hey, put that, on, put that on the screen now, would you, Dave? Would you mind? And in fact, keep that on the screen throughout the, uh, the rest of the interview here. Uh, basically, so people would know where mm -hmm. to contact and how to contact. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, if you want to attend, you can. If yes, you don't, have, you absolutely. don't necessarily have to attend, but they'd love to have your contribution. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's very important. If you're talking about young people being given scholarship, mm -hmm. these are absolutely. tough times right now. Right. Yes. And we are looking for leadership. Uh, in fact, when I, I think about the, the political process we're going through right now, there's not that many folks that are running for office. Who happen to be right up front with African Americans, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a very important piece because that's uh, in, in, in essence that's the standard, if you will, for our mm -hmm. leadership in most cases. So, so I think it's a very, very important piece that we need to do, and what you all have contributed is a great, I mean, really, really neat deal. So, what, are, what so how is the event? Thing? Give me kind of a statement. How many, how long is it going to last? And are you going to have entertainment there? I, I heard a name, if you will. Oh, uh, yes. Eugene Rashad. Yes, you know Motif. Eugene? You know I do Eugene? know. Yeah, I play golf I with Eugene. Oh, yes. Really? Uh -huh. <laughs> We're big, the same Bob, big Bob, Will you, you know yep, Big Bob? Yep, Big Bob. Have you beaten them yet? I've beat them all, yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you, you give him a handicap. He, 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 yeah. I know Bob needs a handicap. He's getting better. Though. Gene too. He's, get, he's getting better, but <laughs> yeah. you're beating him. You, mm -hmm. How many skins, you know? I don't. I try not to gamble. Okay, wait. Well, yeah. <laughs> you said the words. Yeah, I didn't say it. You try not to. I, you know? <laughs> but those guys, they do it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, but no, it's really good. That's really neat. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that's good. Good. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, let's again. Let's let's get back to the to the event again. The location. Is 9 p.m. at is it right, am I right? Uh, 6, 6, 6 p.m. 6, 6 p.m. Right, mm -hmm. November the 10th, 2012, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at mm -hmm. OHSU Health and Healing Atrium, located at 3303 Southwest Bond Avenue. Mm -hmm. And if you've seen the, the trolley going back the and forth going yeah, down I-5, right uh, it's the base. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's where it's going to be. Absolutely. So exactly. And there is free parking. We the, should add that as well. Parking? Yes, you do okay, not have they, to pay can, for parking okay, because good. typically in that area you do. Good. And we were able to arrange so that there's arrange no that? parking. Okay, no so you have signs and this, that, that. Correct. Yes. Just let them know that AKA sorority is front Yes, piece, we'll right? have a, the lot designated as and to where they can okay, go. Okay, and yeah, when they yeah. purchase their ticket, yes. the directions are actually on the back of the ticket. In the back as of the well. ticket. Yes. Like I say, if you if you if you know anything about landmarks, everyone knows the about trans, the trolley yes. going exactly. 
You just you follow the tram at the base, yes. Yes. and you're, get, there. you're there. So you don't have to you're worry there. about trying to figure out where it's going to be. Right. You know, because sometimes it's a little tough. For it is. Folks mm. trying to find out where to go. Let's see what else I'm about. Well, going you on. mentioned the flow of the event. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So it'll start at 6 p.m. and we'll have we're also having a raffle where um, our participants or anyone who's interested in buying raffle tickets can be eligible to win a Kindle. Um, it's one of the e-readers. Oh wow! Yeah, and also a TV. Oh, so really? yeah, those are two of our big raffle items, and okay. that'll be people will be able to purchase tickets as the event. Now, do you have to be there in order to no. get the win? No, no, you just, you do not. So you can just send your contribution in, right? And your name will go into the raffle piece. Correct. Yes, and you yeah. can purchase raffle tickets online actually okay. too. Yes. Um, and then there is a, a grand prize that you actually have to be there to win, and that's a gift certificate for Bonneville Spa. So that's our oh, one of our big prizes. Spot. Yeah, and this is all going towards our, our scholarship fund. Mm -hmm. um, and there also will be a wall of wine. Yes. Joy, if you don't mind sharing a little bit yes, about that. Yes, the goal of the wall of wine is also to raise money for scholarships as well. And so there'll be different uh, types of wine available that will be sealed up. Mm -hmm. And if you come and you donate $20, it will mm -hmm. get you a bottle of wine that would range anywhere from $20 on up. Really? So we are hoping to get uh, some really wine nice. donated, yeah. so mm -hmm. every member will be bringing a bottle and we'll be making sure that that happens as well. It's called a restaurant association. Tell me that's what you call it. Oh, okay. okay. Right. Well, that's we like that. called a restaurant association. <laughs> we like that. Tell them about the event that you're having. Awesome. Uh, and then there's a wine organization, if you will, and they'd be more than glad to contribute whatever you want. Awesome. In fact, they'll be serving like for that. you. Yeah. Really? We would like that. Yeah, because they're trying to promote their wine. Right. Awesome. We would like that because essentially the goal is not just to have all bottles that are ranging right. at $20. Right. Mm -hmm. The goal would be to have have some that are 30, some that are 60, mm -hmm. some that are 100. So when you donate your $20, right. you get a bottle and you don't know whether it would be a $100 right. bottle of yeah. wine or a $30 bottle of wine right. or a $20 right. bottle of wine. Well, you know, we're promoting Oregon wines, you know, in all due respect. You know, oh, okay. You, you figured, you know, we, we, are, we have many venues here mm -hmm. yes. doing business. So mm -hmm. if you contact the Oregon wines, if you will, trust me, okay. they will definitely attend. Thank you. Okay. We appreciate that. And they'll eat, they'll just, I mean, okay. really, it's a, it's a good piece. Wow. Okay. Have a problem, give me a call. We have your that, info. That's, that's, a, that's a good idea. But no, I mean, it's something that is it, well worthwhile, trust mm -hmm. me. I mean, uh, it, you know, to be able to promote the leadership, we're constantly looking for role models. You're mm -hmm. basically developing exactly. role mm -hmm. models, too. Because yes. I'm sure that's part of the criteria for selection, mm -hmm. yes. that they come back and give back, if Absolutely. you will, right? Yes. And I think that's a very important piece. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully what we'll do, and we've talked about this too, that you will be able to, uh, once you've given the recipient, you'll come back on the show, maybe with them. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice. And then we'll just Great. introduce them to the public. These are the recipients, mm -hmm. and, and uh, maybe hand out the scholarships, hand out the money. That that's would be very nice. Right? Yes. You know what I'm saying? And then maybe use that as your promo, and then you can send that out, email this out, that mm -hmm. out, to the various contributors. Absolutely. That would be very and nice. I think that would be a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we got about we got about another six minutes or so. Anything else? Let's talk about something else special. Well, we wanted to share the names of our honorees so folks in the community know. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe I know this person. That's I'll good. come and support yeah, them. I don't want to be selfish, you know. No. I'm, <laughs> I'm an unpartisan guy. You know. the only show. So, who are some of these folks? Let's talk about it. Okay, so um, I'll share the area that they're they'll be honored in in their name. Um, so, Dr. Charles Thomas is being honored in health education. Okay, what's his specialty? Just briefly, what, what is he? Do. And where is he located? OHSU, yes. and I believe it's cancer research. Okay, all right. And at the at the event, um, each of the honorees will come and talk a little bit. Um, oh, good. To the audience, mm -hmm. so you can kind of get some of their background and know mm -hmm. where they're coming from. And by the way, when we were talking to. Um, to Pat, there's a possibility we might be there to video that piece. Oh, that would be oh, wonderful. Yeah, that would be bring, very nice. Then we can bring them back on because they weren't here, and I and yeah. I think it would be it would be very interesting, very special, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. to have them identified, mm -hmm. you know, yes. Right. Yes. on an ongoing basis. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we have Dr. Keith Dempsey in education. And where about is he? John Lewis and Clark. Lewis Clark. John Jackson in entrepreneurship. And what does John do? Where is he? He's State Farm. He State Farm. State, mm -hmm. State, State Farm, Farm insurance. Yeah. Pat, won't you come over here? Real, come over here. Yeah, this would be great. Yeah, just, just, just walk, walk around. Uh, can you come uh, around this way? Okay. And just you mind just standing here for the next oh, week? No. Can we do it? There? Can you get it? Can you get it, Tom? Yeah. Okay, we can get all. Yeah, just, just, yeah, just stand. Yeah, just no, no, stand. Down. Just stand. Oh, yeah. No problem. <laughs> okay. okay. And Pat is our our chair for She's this chair event, for this. so yeah. she is. This is her baby, and it's close to her heart. I noticed. So, uh, 
So I'll have her go through the rest of the honorees for us um, because she's spoken to all of Good. our recipients and has Good kind on. of a Good personal you, relationship. Do 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 she yeah. knows yeah. them all by Good heart. Good on. So okay. <laughs> I'm looking over your shoulder. Okay, we, we, we've done, we've done uh, John Jackson entrepreneurship. Right, right. Now, um, the, our next recipient will be Harold Williams. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Harold died recently, but we wanted mm -hmm. to honor him for his community activism over the right. years. I've known him for years, and he's very deserving. He was very deserving. Might add, too, he was on the PCC board. Yes. Right, he was. Very, very much involved. Harold's very, very much involved in the, in the community, and, and he's run for office. And, mm -hmm. And he's out there. Yeah. Right. In okay. fact, he had me knocking on doors um, yeah. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, public service. And for public service, we are recognizing uh, Terrell Brandon, who has, for several years, has run a sports camp working with the uh, young teen boys. So. Terrell Brandon. Terrell. Former, and yeah, he's a well, he's a former, former uh, great, pro, well, professional pro basketball. Uh, basketball player. Okay. Right. Uh, we're going to be recognizing Nathaniel Golden, who is with the REAP program, mm -hmm. and I understand that um, he's, he works in the background, so a lot of people don't see him, a lot of people don't know him, but they say that he is the one that keeps that program uh, running, and it's a very important program, we're working with we're young doing? boys. Okay, all right. Um, Business? For business, we're recognizing Skip Collier, no, and Skip. Skip has been around forever, he has his own business, and um, He's truly deserving of the honor. I've known him for years, and I'm very proud of him and the work that he does. No skip. I skip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we're honoring Bruce Broussard, who is, um, has been involved in government, run for office a few times, and as mm -hmm. you know, he's the host here on this show today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and Franklin Johnson, who is uh, working with the Embody program. With Embody, the, um, program. Embody is a program that's sponsored by Delta Sigma mm -hmm. Theta Sorority. Oh, really? And Absolutely. yes, and um, so Franklin has been very in instrumental in working with young boys to get them motivated and activated mm -hmm. and giving them leadership training mm -hmm. to uh, get them to give back to the community. Okay. And then we are recognizing a youth. His name is Covenant James. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's been a very active young person who's also been recommended by Delta Sigma Theta, mm. and uh, he's a part of the Embody program. Mm. So, I, I, so I sense a joint venture type deal. You guys are sort of working together, the lady, the, the various sororities are working together? Well, is that, is that we do a lot of networking. Do you do a networking um, we try to together? support each other in the different activities that That's we do. That's a good idea. And we take, honor, we take recommendations mm -hmm. for honorees from the entire community. Mm -hmm. Really? So we are partnershiping with the community, oh, not really? just other Greek organizations, oh, okay. but we ask for, um, we start Start in the summer, yeah. okay. asking right. from the community okay. for names and recommendations okay, of good. people that are out there. Because we know that even though we're a diverse organization and we have people mm -hmm. who are all over mm -hmm. our tri-county area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are people out there who mm -hmm. are quietly behind the yeah. scenes yeah. doing right. work yeah. that needs to be recognized. And so we reach out to the entire community and ask for recommendations. Well, that might be a, in fact that might be an opportune time, if you will, yes. to bring the recipients. The scholarship and make the announcement at the same time. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we will surely follow up yeah. with you. I know, yeah. I, know, I know you will, Pat. Sure. Okay, well, hey, great then. I mean, what, what a what a what a lineup. I mean, it's really a good lineup, fantastic, and and hopefully we can work something out. We'll get the the photos and yes. for these folks and whatever, and do another piece. Well, yes. That'd be great. And I think it'll be that'd really be nice. good. I think people would appreciate that. And then send it out to everybody. Yes. yes. Everybody. 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 <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. Including the governor. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, ladies, this has been great, and I really hope you have a successful event, you know, yeah. and, uh, and and ongoing, okay? Yes. That's got some other ideas. And we talked about some other little ideas, yes. and mm -hmm. you, I'm sure you'll probably be sharing, a, sharing it with us in the very near future. All right, yes. and we'll, we'll keep. Hounding you, so I know you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Appreciate thank that you. very thank much. You. Good luck to you. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with the second half of the show. Okay, mm -hmm. just hold on. Let me know when I sit down. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
thanks again, folks. I hope you enjoyed that first half of the show, and hopefully you'll support that, that event. I think it's quite, it's quite an event, and uh, it's something that we as a community should support, especially when you look at one for role models, and secondly, uh, being able to give scholarships uh, to young folks who, who are in need of, if you will, and can come back, if you will, to this community and, and be role models. And you're going to be there. What could be better than that? that? Gee, well, actually, the Oregon Voters Digest. I mean, I, I want to make sure that, <laughs> that I'm not taking just all the credit. There you go. It's the Oregon Voters Digest, uh, the crew, and, and the folks who have actually put this piece on to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to thank the crew for for being a part of that, for putting us in the situation. And PCM again, too, because we're the first one to actually put this, put this show together for these folks here. And that's basically what we're doing, actually letting people know what's going on in the community. Okay, well with that, let's get in our second half. I'm, I'm sure you, you've seen Herman before. Herman has uh, been very, very much involved. Uh, uh, he's uh, with the uh, Hayden Island and the Harbor Shops. Uh, no, that's, that's wrong. Hayden Island Livability Project. Right. Gee whiz, I'm, I'm reading something else, Herman. I've been knowing Herman for quite some time. But anyway, <laughs> down at Jansen Beach and... and, 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 and Hate Island. Island. I say Jansen Beach. We don't I mean, want that hate. I mean, Jansen you know, Beach. I mean, you don't like that Jansen Beach? You don't like that part? No, of? no. I mean, every time I say, you're sunny out there. That's what, I mean, some of these newer people don't even know what Jansen Beach was yeah, all but about. But I've seen you on the beach out there, sun, sunning up and everything. Well, I was trying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really great. Well, look, folks, as you can see, everyone got their voters pamphlets. They've got, they've got their voters yep. pamphlet, and I would suggest don't throw them in the fireplace at no. this point in time. Uh, and uh, really open them up. There's a lot of information there. Because in all due respect, you want to really understand the, the i.e. The, the the realness of the of this whole program and the nonpartisan aspect of the voters' panel. You're going to be getting all kinds of mail. You're going to be getting all kinds of mail trying to sway you, whatever. But pick this up, and there it is. You got you got the candidates that are running for office. They've got their background. They've written up their own bios, if you will. You've got uh, ballot measures that are in there, and and uh, and that's that's very important. And uh, they've gotten a lot of written up, pros and cons. Yep. So either side of the deal. So it's a very valuable tool, and, and we want to thank the state, if you will, for putting that on. And I uh, noticed that Kate Brown, Oregon Secretary of State, she's got her name right up front here, yep. and she did a good job. Thanks very much, Kate. You did a good job on that voters pamphlet, Oregon General Election, November 6, 2012. Okay, got Herman here. And what we're going to talk about is that we are just going to just briefly go through uh, through some of the things that we uh, well that we've uh, we've done the presidential race. We're going to wait until after the, the debates are over to get really into that piece. Yeah, probably. But, but there, there's one particular ballot measure that I that also talks about um, Hayden Island issue too, with reference to this lottery thing. And the lottery thing has been something that you guys have been doing. Quite yeah, we've time. been pushing the. What you know, was that? What was that about? Well, Stop Lottery Row campaign is uh, trying to get the lottery. Getting a petition drive up, get enough signatures to have some impact on the lottery commission, so they will do some rule changes, and get break an up our it's twelve amazing. lottery retailers that are in a cluster right on the on the island. And uh, we've got a huge number of machines on the island, mm -hmm. but we've got a huge number just in a little cluster of twelve. Each one of them has six machines. Wow. And. And it's bringing many problems to the to the. Um, it's you know like what? Like yeah, I've got chart. I've got charts here from the police department. How uh, to lay it out? What are some how of things areas? have you know changed? Because um, they got a breakdown of uh, police calls on Hayden Island, have kind of went down in them in themselves. Okay. But when you break it down to a thousand feet, of the what's called the Harbor Shops Complex. That's okay. the nice term about the lottery uh, bars. <laughs> mm -hmm. That has increased hugely. Especially the last several, the last couple of years in 2010 and 2012, 2011, it's went up considerably in the number of calls and how much the police have to, you know, patrol the island. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, Commander Leloff, he's the head of the North, North Area uh, Commander of the Police. He's had to have two policemen cover the island where he could have had only one before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the concerns with uh, if the, if this. Amendment, which is 82, yeah, 82, 83, is the amendment to the state constitution, so mm -hmm. you can allow a private casino. Private. That would be the only. That would be the first private. Be casino. the first private casino. Mm -hmm. And I was just reading through the measures a little bit ago to get kind of a feel for things. They they don't dedicate any of this money, this 25 percent of their profits. It goes comes back to the state, but there's no real true dedication to police. To help monitor, but, but it could be handle. Yeah, it could be, but they uh, designate that the state police and the lottery commission will be policing the 
And that's really only policing the casino, not the other associated crimes around the casino. But what about private? Are you going to have a private force too within the casino? Possibility, you know. And that's going to have to deal with an outside force. Now, Wood Village has no police itself. Oh, the other one. Okay, I got you. Okay, that has no police itself. Okay. So they're going to. They, I think they contract with the Multnomah County Sheriff. Okay. For their policing, so that's going to put more pressure on the sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to have it, it always has an increase in crime mm-hmm. when the casinos put in. Mm-hmm. They've got examples in there of opposition to the casinos mm-hmm. and a casino and other places. They always have a huge increase in crime and fire department mm-hmm. calls. Now the existing now the existing casinos that we have in the in the state do they have similar kind of problems with crime and this that and the other? That I don't know because we're the on Hayden Island. We've got the biggest cluster of machines. Yeah, now that's a separate deal. Okay, this yeah, that's a separate thing on Hayden Island. We're not talking about that. And that's kind of all we can look at. You know, they. Uh, no, we got crime there. We got problems. There. It's in, increased tremendously. Got, you know? very much, very and, much. and about probably 60 to 80 percent, depending on what time of day, of the people that frequent the, that lottery row we have mm-hmm. are from Washington. Mm-hmm. And out in Wood Village, out there with this casino, you could expect to have a huge influx of. Washingtonians coming to that casino, and how that would affect us. Maybe they would get fewer people on the island. Maybe more of them would divert out to mm-hmm. Wood Village. Yeah, because it would be a bigger place. I, I don't know. Harvey, it might be a good thing for us. Yeah, yeah. But it yeah. wouldn't be so good for them. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, but like you said, I mean, when you think about the the, the, the casinos that are around the state, I, I've gone to several of them. You, know, you can catch the bus here. Yeah. You know, here at Safeway, and and, 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 and leave the driving to the, to yeah. them, if you yeah. will. Yeah, and I've not time. I've not noticed any major, um, uh, if you will, uh, well, let's say homeless or whatever, but people just milling around and yeah, no. and I eat doing all kinds of things and drugs outside just outside the area. It's a very yeah. clean facility aspect yeah. of it. Because we do a fundraiser because I'm involved with loaves and fishes on the island, mm-hmm. and we do a fundraiser every few months. Uh, Usually go down to Spirit Mountain. This last yeah, one we went right. to down to uh, Shook Winds, mm-hmm. uh, but they, you know, those are places that are away from the population centers. They're a destination to go to, as, and their local crime is was never a big problem anyway, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're small communities. Mm-hmm. And uh, but here you got the idea is that out in Wood Village to drop a casino into a residential area. It doesn't have a history of having a casino, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you know it may attract different people than go to a local bar to play the video slot machines, poker machines. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, like you said, I, I, there's pros and cons about mm-hmm. about yeah. the whole piece, and yeah. uh, and I've looked at some of the ads, if you will, and some of the you, you read some of the stuff, and they're saying that they, there's there's the time to compensate. But the big thing about that is that I'm looking at is the fact that. Uh, this is a private casino, and now they're going to be paying taxes. Yeah. And we need money in this yeah. state. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah. Our PERS bill just went up, if oh, you yeah. will. Yeah. And so consequently, uh, schools are going to be cut back uh, as far as teachers yeah. and things of that nature. So we need the money. And it's my understanding, the first deal, they, they, they've been throwing around this $100 million, if you will, mm-hmm. that's going to go in the, in the coffers, in the state right. coffers, to off, maybe offset some of that deal and maybe and keep a few more teachers, yeah. if you will, and other things. That bill is getting to be a big deal. Yeah. And then I think it's going to be more than $100 million because you're going to, you're going to have outside businesses, too, that's right. going to be... I mean, it, it's just that, uh, you know, we have the opportunity to do something. Now, it's my understanding that the present casinos don't pay taxes. They don't pay, they don't pay state taxes. No, so you don't, because they're on Indian, Indian reservation yeah, lands. But, so. but they don't pay. Yeah, right. But they're here. Yeah, and they're, because and it's Indian property. And so they, they, but they're using the I'm road. sure they pay income no. taxes yeah, for they their don't employees. Pay state, but they use the roads but and the all that stuff. property taxes, stuff. they don't. Yeah, but they pay the roads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And they have a huge, uh, you know, like uh, Spirit Mountain has a big uh, community fund they pay into. Yeah, that's yeah. uh, money's given out to charitable about nine hundred different yeah, charitable. Yeah. Co- uh, I think we may have to we may we may have so. to bring bring back the the, 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 the policies and the guidelines and uh, <laughs> from those. I mean, unless until this came up, they're saying they're going to give up a hundred million dollars. Yeah, and maybe these other folks yeah. may want to consider coming up with some money for the yeah. coffers. We need money. Oh yeah, you know. Well, I was just reading the thing. The, There's a story in the Oregonian today about this, and somebody I didn't I don't remember the person, but. He's been involved in, in uh, accounting with casinos and mm-hmm. what I don't remember what he does now, mm-hmm. but he looked through the numbers and he su- suggested that instead of twenty five percent, it should really be fifty percent mm-hmm. mm-hmm. to make it 
more equitable, and, uh, for, and that would give us more money. Yeah, but but all of them. Yeah. I'm not just talking about that. Oh, you just you talking, talking about Indians too? I'm talking about, the, I'm talking about the people who do business in Oregon. Oh, oh yeah. And, oh, are using, everybody. and are using the services of Oregon. I'm just okay. saying there's an opportunity to go back and revisit, if you will, as a result of this entity that's looking at yeah. being a private entity, yeah. if you will. They're going to be giving money to the yeah. state, which we need. Oh, that's yeah. where I'm kind of coming yeah. from, okay? Right. The other thing is that we're going to be creating jobs. Yep. I mean, over 2,000 jobs, maybe 3,000 jobs, and yeah. we need those jobs. If you there was one thing, though, in the, one of the oppositions in the lottery uh, or in the casino um, that's interesting was that uh, it's not, well, in fact, Steve Novix, it's his, he, he wrote an opposition to the okay. casino, and it's in the voters' pamphlet. And he was saying, well, economic development is when Intel expands their production facilities and ships chips all over the world. That's economic development. But when you set up a casino and you and the money is coming from the residents, <laughs> the that's not really economic development anymore. That's just you're transferring money from one person to another person. I don't know where he's coming from. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know that but that's the you know real economic development is when you have a you know, manufacturer facility and you increase the job base mm -hmm. where this will be creating jobs, but are they as uh, as important a job, let's say, or a really as beneficial a job as the one at some manufacturing facility. Yeah. Well, and we, we, we're going back and forth. Oh, That's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. But 2,000 jobs is 2,000 jobs. 2,000 jobs. A man bet. not working a day that can't feed his family has got yeah. a job. Trust me, oh, yeah. he'll be in line. There'll be all you kinds of you. people looking for those jobs, yeah. if you will. You see what I'm yeah. saying? And the other thing is that when I start thinking about that piece also, too, if you get in a bus and you have to drive during the winter, Mm -hmm. I'm saying you got to go back from point A to point B. This is a shorter distance. Oh yeah, it's the largest city in the in the state. Yeah. And then it's my understanding that they also have to get the approval of Gresham. They got to go to the yeah. to the city yeah. and get that hasn't been done yet. Oops. And that's some more money to yeah. be taken. They may well, like throw something at the table and say eighty measure eighty two is that makes changes uh, the constitution so we can allow a private casino. Right. Then eighty three is the part of that that it, it's not even valid unless you pass eighty two. Right, because you got to have eighty two to make eighty three work. Right, right, so right, they, right. You need them both together right. to make them. Well, work. competition is always good. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there's a hundred million dollars on the table that we're going to get on this piece, <laughs> and we got several of the casinos that are out there and ain't paying the money. Yeah. Okay, and they're using the services. Yeah. Okay, and so my point is that I think there's a, here's an opportunity for us to discuss that and maybe revisit that. Mm -hmm. And as far as security and things of that nature, again, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to talk about security. How is there security on the existing casinos, and how can we apply that to this, right. whatever? We are the largest city in the, in the state. Right. And then I'm thinking about the city of Portland. You know, here's, a, here's an opportunity to get some money here. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is money across the board, and it's a very yeah. important piece. And, 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 I, and I think about construction jobs and whatever, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about recidivism. I'm thinking about, um, you know, we've got, we've got the whole issue with the criminal justice system right. aspect of it. And, and I'm being familiar with construction and whatever. They hire folks. Who are, who are ex-offenders in many ways, who are laborers and things of that nature, and yeah. I mean it goes on and on and on. I, I'm just I like the idea of what's happening right now, yeah. and I and from a political standpoint, and I and I got to respect the governors who are, who signed off on this, and and all the legislators, if you will, both R's and D's, mm -hmm. because in all due respect, when they run for office, the casinos give them money. <laughs> <laughs> so let's be clear. Well, about the casinos that. are the governors, uh, past governors, and uh, everybody got money. They they're. They've, they're no, they're a big no on this. this no, whole but, thing. but understand what I'm saying. Yeah. And I respect them all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But my point is that yeah. some time for running for office, mm -hmm. everybody has folks in. And all oh, due yeah. respect, the casinos give folks the money. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And that's point blank. <laughs> and I'm not taking anything away from them in aspect of it. But I'm just saying, I think here's an opportunity for us to really talk about futures and whatever. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, these, the PERS bill is going big. And the key is that where are we yeah. going to find the money? And the last thing I think we need to do is cut down on our education. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very important piece yep. because that's what, because that's what we're talking about now. we got problems in our education oh, funding yeah. aspect of it and the PERS deal. Maybe they're going to have to, I don't know, what, renegotiate the PERS, but I don't think the people in the PERS are going to say, no way. Are we so re it's really that tough. Piece? You know, that's, so, that's the biggest so. bill that uh, you know, education has. But guess the what? They passed the bills. You know? They passed the passed laws it, as a retirement piece, and they got to pay the bill. It out somehow. And so we got to create some money somewhere else. Yeah. And so the first hundred million is on the yeah. table. Yeah. And I'm saying that's something that it's yeah. going to be very hard for folks to say no to. Right. Okay. And so I'm saying again, look at your voters' pamphlet, check it out, 
and look at the pros and the cons. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's a hundred million, and I'd like to revisit the. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, pieces in there in favor of both of those measures, or, and then there's ones opposed. So yeah. you know, yeah. we've got a yeah. big variety, yeah. big wide gap there yeah. to look at and yeah. understand it. And you know, and it's understanding that you know a lot of the mom and pa shops and restaurants around the around this in this area, if you will. I mean, their income has been based, especially restaurant and and whatever, and bars and whatever. It's the lottery. It's those machines, if you will. Oh, yeah. You got my point? Big that, profit center that, for That's them. a big profit yeah. center aspect of it. And actually, they're thinking about the possibility that this big outfit comes up, it's going to suck up a lot of the, <laughs> lot of the deals. Right. And it, it probably will. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. we may have to come up with some compromise or something mm -hmm. to work yeah. something out. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line, folks, is to still the same deal. That $100 million is on the table, yep. and it will benefit Gresham. You know, it's like saying anywhere, they got to go to Gresham and get the city council to pass this deal. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have a, uh, a, a, an adequate number of police force, guess what? That becomes part of the deal. Mm -hmm. They might be able to add police, yep. more police in their arena, and guess where they get the money from? Mm -hmm. From the same yeah, folks. That's so right. adding up to that 50% if yeah, necessary. Yeah. So my point is that it has to work for everybody. And at the end of the day, everybody gambles. Yeah. I mean, when you start yeah. thinking about our, our uh, IE, our seniors, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, at this point in time, uh, you know, we've got quite a, a group within that arena. And guess what are some of the things that they do? Right. They get on the bus and go you to the casinos. <laughs> and some of them like to drive their cars. And this would yeah. be a facility because a lot of seniors, you know, the baby boomers are right here in this particular area. Right. They can drive over there. And I like the idea about all this the entertainment center and this, that, and the other. And, and you know, they got wheelchairs and all, oh, yeah. I mean, all kinds of accommodations oh, yeah. for kids. On, uh, it's a, it's quite a, it's quite a deal. Theaters and all. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like saying, I'm just throwing that out at the table yeah. mm -hmm. because that's basically what I read. And then yeah. there's the politics of it all. That's one thing. And then, the, and then the folks who are supporting this piece. That's another thing. And all I will say, uh, you know, and, and and from those folks who are. Who are getting the money and the political? Hey, that's the name of the game when you're out there trying to run for office. You got to yeah. get support, yeah. and the casinos have definitely put some monies out there to yeah. the various candidates. And like anything else, the casinos are saying to those candidates, "Hey, I gave you money in the past. Yeah, you got to support me." So, but, but you got to put that aside to a certain degree yeah. and look at the real benefits, if you will, mm -hmm. on both sides of the deal. So yeah. look at it from a beneficial standpoint and a loss of revenue. Right. We need money in this state. Mm -hmm. So my, that's kind of like where my head is at, at this point <laughs> in time. And like you said, there are issues within our community. Mm -hmm. And this would be a benefit yeah. to the community yeah. at Hayden Island. Because yeah, it could very well be. It know? could be a benefit. Yeah. You because bet. we got a concern, and because that one of that major concern, you got too many machines in one area, yeah, and it's drawing all kinds of folks, right. and everybody has a right to walk in the door. They can't say no to anybody, yeah. But as a result of that, we got drug problems over there. We got mm -hmm. people selling drugs. We've got prostitution. Oh, all kinds. I mean, of, just yeah. go on and on and on, yeah. and and we've got over two thousand people living on that island, mm -hmm. besides businesses and whatever. Right. And we got a major construction coming up in regards to the bridge, CRC. That's another issue. Yeah, if it, if it ever gets going. Yeah, we don't have the money yet. I mean, most folks. Because they're looking for money. Uh, Everybody's looking for money. And they got the hundred and some odd million dollars already been spent to folks outside of the yeah, community, right? Yeah, hundred and fifty million. Yeah, already yeah. picked up the money and no bridge. Yeah, okay, no bridge. No bridge at this yeah. point in time. But this is a major issue with reference to crime. We've got families over there. We've got young people. Yeah. Uh, we got we got no due respect. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I've got a business over there. My, my wife and I, we have a business. Is we're finding syringes out there in the front of our building, in the front yeah. of the deal, and yeah. cars are being broken in the, in yep. the parking lot, and people are fencing goods out there in the in the parking lot and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's a problem, okay? Oh, yeah. Not to say that we yeah. and you know, the Portland police are saying, hey, we don't have enough people <coughs> to patrol the area. We need right. more folks. Yeah. So that's another area that we can talk to yeah. as a result of this piece. Yeah. We can put more pressure on the state yeah. and the city. The states, the city say, I don't have any more money. No. So hey, state, come up with some money. Yeah. So maybe they can come back. And That's one of my old things. I've, you know, I've been promoting this for a while now. Is you know some of this lottery money? How about you know two or three, right. four percent? Right. Come back to the community. Right. You know, they talk more about more police. Maybe they talk it. about the 95, 97 cents that the lottery you know brings back to the community. Well, right. I haven't seen it. Yeah. And yeah. it certainly doesn't support the police. Right. Right. It's on economic development or schools and other stuff. And the police are stuck here with right. a problem they're trying to they're they're supposed to deal with, and no 
funds to deal with it with. Um, and it's pretty thick, you know, it's almost getting like in so many words, they, 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 they're, they're treating a lot of the folks up there on the island like, like we're a stepchild, yeah. you know, like a stepchild, yeah. because in all due respect, because yeah. I remember High Noon and Ron Smith, president yeah. of the organization, yeah. had written articles, uh, they had articles yeah. in the was in Tribune and right. Argonne and whatever, talking to at least, at least, uh, at least uh, limiting the number of slots. Right. Machine, maybe that would help out. Yeah, and then the naturally. Well, there was there was a set of rules that uh, the lottery and the and the head of the lottery uh, had drafted, and the commissioners just because we were thought that we were the point where they got these. It's the lottery commission. Now, yeah, right? the lottery had these new rules, and they were going to just either implement them immediately or wait until 2015 mm -hmm. when the licenses come due. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, instead, the commissioners just threw it out and told them to start over. Wow. Because they would have, would have basically done is the twelve uh, retailers would have had to been reduced to six, and either immediately or in 2015. Right. And the commissioners decide, well, we're not going to do any of that. We got to look at some other approach because we're afraid of lawsuits mm -hmm. from the retailers that we're, we'd have to be taken yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we suffer, and but. The lottery still gets their money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, that's, that's a, yeah. And, you know, and I guess the other concern is that, uh, in all due respect, it was in the paper, the Oregonian, there was a concern about the, the new chair coming in. Mm -hmm. And Lisa Nato, she's an attorney. Yeah. She's an attorney yep. with uh, Miller Nash. Right. And it just so happened that uh, uh, the, uh, the the folks who uh, who own the, the lottery role, yeah. and it happens to be a client. And six of them. Yeah, a client. I mean, yeah. a client right. of Miller Nash. Yeah. And people were concerned about conflict of interest, yeah. but they said no, it won't be this, etc. And I, and, yeah. and, uh, that's, that's, that's hard to stomach. That, that's that hard one. to stomach that piece. So, <laughs> so it's going to be it's kind of tough for a few yeah. folks, if yeah. you will. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is that um, uh, you know, in order to get fairness on this, it's it, that particular issue, we need representation, and it's kind of tough. Yeah. So maybe this 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 situation with this yeah. new casino that's being presented yeah. may be of some benefits. Yeah, may it bleed off this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, move it yes, east. Yes, maybe we can negotiate, come to the table. Move east, young gambler, yes, yes, move east. Yes, so maybe, maybe the voters <laughs> may want to consider doing that kind of a piece aspect of it. You know, they, I'm not that I'm trying to be partial. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I think that's something that we, in fact, we need to look at the whole situation because people are concerned about the number of people who are gambling and mm -hmm. and people who are on welfare gambling and spending their last money. Oh, yeah, and seniors yeah, that's a big Problem, you know. And the whole issue of, I mean, it, it's, it can be habitual, you know yeah. what I mean, and, and addictive, yeah. if you will. So that's a, that's a major problem. And in fact, along that particular line, I, I, I know that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Native Americans who own those casinos, they're, they're spending a lot of money in the, within their own community. Yeah. Because there are a lot of Native Americans who have alcoholic yeah. problems, they're, they're spending that money. But we got other Oregonians out here yeah. who have other problems too. Yeah, because they've pretty much taken care of their own health, their own health coverage now. Yes. They can cover all the right. tribe members. Right. And right. They've done a lot for their own tribe. Right. And, right. Right. You know, improve their lives yeah. tremendously. I mean, yeah. It'd be it'd be a different deal if it was just a bubble, and then they, they wouldn't yeah. have to go out that bubble, mm -hmm. and nobody else would participate. Right. Yeah. But those roads that come in, that these folks come in to gamble and this, that, and other. Right. They, they get potholes and we have to fix them. And <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I don't want to get caught up in that yeah. arena. But the fact of the matter is we've had them a long time. And this yeah. new project that's being presented as a private entity with that $100 million on the table, yeah. that's exciting. That yeah. might give us the opportunity now yeah. to look at casinos across the board, right. even lottery, the whole gamut. Right. Just throw it on the table and let's rethink this, think right. about the human, the human beings that are being right. affected by this issue and whatever. So it's a, I think it's an opportune time. Yeah. So I would suggest very strongly that you take your voters pamphlet and look at the pros and the cons aspect of it, this deal and uh, see what we can see what we can do about that particular piece. There are other areas in that piece, buddy. Now, what do you think about the mayor's race real quick? Well, I tell you, I, think, I don't think. Uh, well, that's a toss up. For I me. think. Well, I think it's going to be gone. Yeah. I think with all due respect, Jeff has kind of got to the point. Yeah, you know, he's kind of shot himself in the foot yeah, enough times. Yeah. That you know, one thing about this town, especially there are three things you just don't bother, you don't bother with. And that's women, <laughs> animals, there you go. and bicycles. There you go. <laughs> those are three areas you don't, if you got a bad record with any of those three That's areas, a quote. We've got a got, new quote you for got, you. Yeah, you got a new quote. <laughs> yeah, if, you, right if you start messing with bicycles, <laughs> women, and animals, and animals. You're trouble. You, you, you're trouble. You yeah. can't do that thing. That's so true. in all due respect, Jeff was, I thought was really great. But then I think about, yeah. about uh, the, the young lady that ran, you know. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, she's out. You know, yeah. But anyway, Charlie's. I think Charlie's going to be in. I think yeah. Charlie's going to be the mayor. But two of those guys, I really, really would like to have seen the debate. 
and uh, and uh, definitely really brought some stuff to the table, yeah. young folks and whatever. Yeah. Uh, he's a very dynamic young man, but you know how it is. For some strange reason, we, we don't we don't uh, we don't check that stuff out at the beginning. You know, when yeah. one files for office, we go back oh, yeah. twenty years. I mean, oh, yeah, why didn't they say really... something? Why didn't they say something when he ran for the legislature? Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean? yeah. They didn't say anything. Yeah. In fact, why did they say something to Charlie about uh, the residency thing? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, give me a break. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think maybe we need to revisit that. Maybe yeah. we need to look at the whole issue of uh, when one applies to well, run for anything. Well, if he does get elected as mayor, we can really tr truly call the state of Oregon that's really into recycling. We recycle the governor. Yes. And we recycle one a city council member. Yes. Uh, to to mayor yes so you know it's we're into recycling yes yeah I heard that <laughs> but you know Charlie brings a, a number of good things to the table though. yeah I'm, I'm oh, looking yeah. at some yeah. stuff the whole issue of police and he didn't get the endorsement police but I I liked the idea about community policing and things of that right. nature and mm -hmm. going back to the schools maybe looking at voc ed getting back in Portland right. not that that's their responsibility but he got some good things anyway. yeah you know what I'm saying so anyway folks I think we're at that point now we got to give it up uh, Hey, Aaron, thanks again. It's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. And hey, read your voters pamphlet, folks. Yep. And again, as George Pate said, back to what you believe in. We'll see you next week with another good program. Have a good one. Take care.